I was sitting with Michael Moore at a table of sort of Hollywood tastemakers, and it was right around the time that Fahrenheit 9-11 came out. And the guy at the table said, what, you know, e the Earth will regenerate its species every so, every so many millions of years. There's nothing you can do about it. The dinosaurs were gone, and humans get their time, and someone else will get their time. And Michael kind of shrugged, and I, and I looked at the guy who said it, and I said, uh, but that's an excuse for you to not take any responsibility right now. And the guy actually, acquiesced. he was like, yeah, you got a point. Every, I, I believe, I truly believe in every human being, uh, there's at least a seed of uh, being so thankful and grateful for even being able to be here that you almost, you almost owe the earth a debt just for it facilitating all your right. bullshit. Yeah. yeah. So make it happen. Let's make it happen. The environment is nonpartisan. The environment is survival. There are no Democrats. There are no Republicans. There's the right person for the job. End of story. Republican and Democrat is nothing but division. It's nothing but political propaganda to keep people's hearts and minds and spirits away from the real issues at hand. There's a lot of people now saying that, you know, forget about the politicians. Lately, in our, uh, our corporate sectors, we're actually seeing them make more proactive decisions than our officials in government. In How about that? As many Priuses as people as I see on the road, yeah. that has to be a great sign. I mean, yeah. there, there, there's a lot of signs of life when it comes to the preservation of, this, of the planet. And it's one thing for me to turn my house solar and to have a saltwater, non-chlorinated -chlor pool and a non-chemical household and non-chemical paint on the walls, because I can afford it, man. Yeah. It's really, it, it, it's time that we work this into the fiber of our species. Yeah. It's a challenge to be born into this too, you know, because you're kind of born into being genetically addicted to consumption. Yeah. So it, it definitely is something that has to be sort of bred out of our system in a way. Change, intelligent dialogue is change, you know, I mean, that's, that's what's going to lead us to, a, to a, a clearer course in all of our paths is just the dialogue. And I'm glad that you guys are out there swinging the big bat and fighting the good fight. And You know, there's a lot of people, man, from Southern Poverty Law Center to Chad Bergracki cleaning up the Mississippi River to Julia Butterfly living in trees for two years. I mean, there's a lot of great, great stuff out there and people who mean it. If you're not being socially responsible, you know, if you really want to go out young and leave a beautiful corpse, well, that's on you. Yeah. But I'd, I'd rather make a more significant contribution. On, yeah. on a lot of different levels. Not that, I mean, you can't make a bigger contribution than John Bonham or Jimi Hendrix, you know? I, I'm not saying that, but there are, it's just a different time, and there's different responsibilities to be had, yeah. whether you're a musician or, or a school teacher or a mechanic or a doctor or a lawyer. Uh, so I am officially making green hip. <laughs> it happened here, it happened here first, it happened here now. Being green is now cutting edge, being green is now hip. Being green is now high art. Being green is now high fashion. If you're not green, you're so out. If you're not green, you're square. You're, you're, if you're not green, you're totally in your 90s.